Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sang Gyo Shin and I'm a scientist of Design Engineering Software Group here at Keysight Technologies. My talk is especially relevant to those of you who are researching a millimeter wave beamforming system. The subject can be seen under the following headings. I will start by introducing a research trend looking for extended spectrum toward terahertz. Then, I'm going to talk about the various beam design techniques and hardware design issues in the context of a system level engineering. You will also see practical simulation examples during this presentation. Looking beyond 5G, FCC opened the terahertz spectrum to support applications such as wireless cognition, sensing and imaging, communication, and centimeter level positioning. As you are aware, extending to a much higher carrier frequency is one of the important trends and challenges in the research. Due to the continuing demand for more traffic, higher consumer data rate, and the associated need for the more spectrum and wider transmission bandwidth. The basic properties of the frequency band available for 5G and 6G are given in the table, and the graph showing the effect of atmospheric attenuation and free space loss across the frequency. One should note that the increase in free space loss is quite small when moving to the terahertz region from 30 gigahertz onwards. If the antenna area is kept constant, the free space loss is compensated for by the increase in the antenna gain. However, the real world, real downside of the higher frequency is increased complexity and parallelism in RF hardware and the reduced beam width that create problems with signal acquisition and beam tracking in mobile applications. Now I'd like to expand on my point about beam forming in a millimeter wave communication system. Extensive usage of beam forming and a massive number of antenna elements for data transmission and for control plane procedures are notable components of beyond 5G and 6G design. In a phased array, the signal from the transmitter is fed to the antennas through phase shifters by a digitally controlled beamformer vector, which can alter the phase electronically, thus steering the beam of radio waves to a different direction. Since the array consists of many small antennas to achieve high gain, phase arrays are mainly practical at the high frequency end of the radio spectrum. Beamforming code book is a set of beams, and each beam is considered as one direction of the spatial range. It is specified in a matrix, where each column is a weight vector corresponding to one beam pattern, and each row is the number of antennas. Let's look at an example of a beam code book that consists of 64 antenna elements and seven beam patterns. The composite radiation pattern has been generated from our reference phase array system design and analysis software. This 3D analysis shows not only the individual beam's shape, angle, and magnitude, but also the entire coverage region of the beamformer matrix. This kind of the reference code book would normally be made for partial coverage region analysis before researchers move on to the develop the entire and optimized beam matrix. Before we start deep diving, I would like to introduce some basic about beamforming in the next two slides. The beamforming vector, also known as a steering vector or beamforming weight, is a vector of a progressive phases that can be calculated from this simple equation, where theta is beam direction and B is the spacing between antenna elements in the case of a one-dimensional linear array. For a two-dimensional planar array, you can get the vector from the chronicle production of the two beamforming vectors calculated in one-dimensional array. Once you apply the vector into phase shifters, you can get this type of a radiation pattern in an ideal hardware design case without any impairments. To characterize the beam, let me add a marker at the point of the beam peak Note that the marker information left corner of the 3D graph window is augmented with the beam measurement information. In addition, observe the visual cue added to the main lobe. 
A white control line is shown at the measurement level chosen for the beam width measurement. A translucent purple pie shape denoting the phi angle, white green pie shape denoting the theta angle for the measurement level. Moving to this page, let's think about the, what the key design goal of the code book is. Clearly, it is to align transmit and receive as quickly as possible by maximizing the spherical with reduced code book size while maintaining beam peak flatness between individual beams in the matrix. This figure illustrates general beam training procedure by using a specialized training sequence. In the case of the 5G new radio, up to 64 synchronization signal block patterns can be transmitted in millimeter wave bands. Beyond 5G and 6G using narrow beams, researchers are looking for much efficient code book development considering various hardware design constraints. Researchers are using a special type of code book for beam detection region analysis. When the beam theta angle in increases, the power in the main lobe of the beam decreases and spread to side lobes, as you can see from this graph. Let's simply compare two beams, P1 on top and P5 on lower right. The magnitude of the beam peaks is different. 21.92 for P1 and 20.16 for P5 each. The beam width and the shape are quite different. Based on this analysis, you have learned that the greater number of the beams need to be fit into a beam formal matrix as the theta angle increases. This type of the 3D visualization techniques that are equipped with the various functions such as overlapping, wireframing, automatic beam measurement, beam width control line, rotation, and zooming are very useful for the efficient code book design. Now, let's talk about the discrete Fourier transform based code book. The use of analog beam selection scheme in the TFT based multi user hybrid beam forming system is one of the key millimeter wave massive MIMO research topics. The LTE standard favors the TFT based code book for its simplicity as shown in the equations, whose beam forming weight vector code words are permitted column of the TFT matrix. However, the world is not as easy as you see from this simple slide. You must ensure the orthogonality of the pre-coding matrix by developing a new algorithm outperforming the conventional one. This requires the knowledge of the channel quality, which normally is denoted as a channel stated information, CSI. The composite beam pattern here is from a conventional DFT matrix. The antenna elements are uniformly spaced and linearly arranged. The example code book here is generated just applying closed form expressions. As we reviewed in the previous slide, under the assumption that the channels are spatially correlated. In the hybrid beam forming architecture context, different from the full digital system, there are two beam forming components in the hybrid beam forming system. One is the high dimensional analog beam forming implemented at the RF module, and the other is the low dimensional digital beam forming implemented at the baseband module. Due to the nonlinear characteristics of power amplifier, it is not suggested to adjust the amplitude of the signals for beamforming used at the RF module. The commonly used analog beamforming enablers include phase shifter, switch networks, lens antennas, photometrics, or other discrete Fourier transform modules. All the mentioned devices only shift the phase of the signal without changing its modulus. Due to the constant modulus restriction at the analog components, it is important to design proper analog beam forming weights. In this case, we can see the TFT based code book create a rectangular pyramid shape of composite beam patterns, which provide quite insightful information in your design verification phase. Moving to the next slide, I'd like to discuss more about beam series as we reviewed earlier. It is significant to establish a stable millimeter wave connection for both network access and data transmission. Usually, the coverage is studied with wide beams, device discovery, and sector level search, while the narrow beam analysis is for data transmission. 
The spherical coverage of a UE is a critical parameter for mobile communication systems. As the angle of incoming signal and the orientation of the UE will be random. In millimeter wave frequencies, the spherical coverage is going to be particularly critical as the channel is expected to be sparser. Due to this randomness of wireless channels, antenna systems in a mobile terminal must own a large spherical coverage, which raises new challenges for the performance characterization of millimeter wave devices. In the latest specification of the third generation partnership project, the requirements on spherical coverage in millimeter wave frequencies is defined, which is evaluated with the cumulative distribution function of the effective isotropic radiator power. The EIRP value at CDF equal 0% indicate the minimum EIRP level when isotropic spherical coverage is achieved. The value when CDF equal 100% shows the peak EIRP value of the array system. Conventionally, network operators set minimum specification for the over-the-air performance of UE at sub-6 gigahertz cellular band, which include a total radiator power, TRP, and the total isotropic sensitivity, TIS. However, TRP or TIS is not suitable to characterize the beam steering capability of a UE. Parameters that can measure the power radiated towards the specific direction is needed to characterize the spherical coverage of a UE. Coverage efficiency and the total scan patterns are defined to measure the spherical coverage of a beam steering antenna system. The total scan pattern can be obtained from all possible beam steering radiation patterns by extracting the best achievable gain at every solid angular point. The graph shows an example of the total scan pattern of the hemisphere. Using this kind of a visualization and measurement technique, the spectrum is guided by the efficiency, which is defined as the ratio between the total cover the solid angles and the whole surrounding sphere. While we are discussing millimeter wave beamforming technology, it would be meaningful looking at existing standards like IEEE 802.15.3C and IEEE 802.11AD. Taking energy consumption and the realization complexity into consideration, 50 gigahertz millimeter wave communication usually use the beam codebook based beam steering system. Furthermore, a better scheme for 60 gigahertz devices that can further reduce the realization complexity is to use the phase array antenna with fixed amplitude of the beam weight vector. The codebook matrix in 15.3C consists of only four phases and lacks flexibility. So, N-phase beam codebook design scheme is used in a 11AD. An N-phase beam codebook for a phase array can be defined as a M by K matrix W where M denotes the number of antenna elements and K denotes the desired number of beams. In this page, I'd like to illustrate these equations by showing you two different five cut beam patterns. When N equals four, the 11AD codebook is just the same as the 15.3C. When K is greater than or equal to two times M, the gain loss of an intersection point between adjacent beams will be less than one dB in the case, the number of predefined beam patterns and the number of antenna elements are supposed to satisfy the equation K equal two times of M to reduce the gain loss. Exhaustive search used in the both standards will greatly increase the time and energy consumption in the beam training stage with the increment of the antenna elements number. Such an exponentially increasing consumption would burden the protocol header and reduce the quality of the user experience. Therefore, we need more advanced codebook technique for beyond 5G and 6G. Now I'd like to expand on my point about hardware implementation perspective by addressing four design issues, which are beam screen, mutual coupling, active loading, and dual polarization. Broadband communications over millimeter wave frequency bands makes massive MIMO attractive 
since the tiny antenna size facilitated packaging a tremendously large number of antennas in a small area. As millimeter wave communication highly rely on the precise alignment of the beams between the transmitter and the receiver, beam screen will result in severe performance degradation if not carefully treated. If this propagation delay across the array is comparable to the symbol period, the different antenna elements will receive the different amplitude and phases of the same symbols as described in the figure one. This is an inherent property of the large scale array called the spatial wideband effect. A wideband signal will have a slight variation of the antenna radiation pattern as a function of a frequency, which is generally referred to as a beam squint. The spatial wideband effect in a large antenna array is similar to the frequency wideband effect. While frequency selectivity results from the multipass delay, the spatial wideband effect exists on a large antenna array, even in a line of sight channel with no multipath. This page shows the squinting effect very well. The main grip in the middle is created with a frequency sweep analysis from 135 gigahertz to 145 gigahertz using phase shifter based beamformers. We can observe the beam direction variation of the antenna radiation patterns of all the traces from different frequencies. We can also discover the effect from the 3D grip on the bottom right corner too. To solve this problem, I took up phase shifters from my phase array design and replaced them with true time delay elements. The frequency sweep analysis grip on the right shows that the beam direction is not changed over different frequencies. Even though it can solve the issue, using true time delay for a wideband beamformer for cellular application is not seriously considered due to the size and the cost constraints for the hardware realization. Another solution is for us to create a frequency-dependent steering vector utilizing several RF chains. In conventional cases, without considering beam squint, for each multipass component, one can simply use a single RF chain to generate a beam pointing toward the specific direction. Considering the beam screen effect, a beam should be generated by frequency-dependent beam steering vectors over different subcarriers, which cannot be achieved by a single RF chain since the analog precoders are generally and constant during one OFTM block. To address this issue, we could utilize several RF chains to cooperatively generate the frequency-dependent beamforming vector across different subcarriers. However, this approach also may have another issue such as increased implementation complexity. Mutual coupling is an electromagnetic interaction between the antenna elements in an antenna array. It changes gain and matching characteristic of an array and finally disturb the radiation pattern. The effect of a mutual coupling is serious if the element spacing is small, such as the limited wave application. We can explain it by utilizing an equivalent circuit of individual antenna and coupled antennas with definition of current, voltages, and impedances as described in the slide. The matrix Z in figure three is an impedance matrix which can be converted to a scattering matrix. The coupling effect can be characterized by this mutual impedance between that is determined by the physical properties of the array and the excitation function. So let's take a look at how the impedance matrix can be utilized for system level analysis in the next slide. Array analysis is very commonly performed using the concept of mutual impedances. Let us consider an antenna array of N radiating elements. The mutual impedance between the ith array element and the j's array element is determined as z equal v sub i over i sub z, where v sub i is the voltage appearing at the open circuited port of element i due to the current source i sub z. At the port of element J, while all the other elements are open circuited, various methods have been proposed for the estimation of the coupling matrix, 
but the most popular of these is generally referred to as a open circuit voltage method and has been used in many system level performance analysis. This method assumes that the coupling matrix is simply given by the equation C in this slide, assuming the array of electrically small elements in the absence of the external scatters. The matrix C extracted from an electromagnetic simulation has been digitalized in the left graph. And we can find the self-coupling vectors from the diagonal of the matrix and cross-coupling vectors from up diagonals. The right graph shows the mutual coupling effect by displaying different radiation patterns between the actual coupling matrix and the ideal one. Let me elaborate on the active driving impedance, also known as the scan impedance. In the absence of a mutual coupling, it is simply equal to the self-impedance and is independent of the element excitations. However, the presence of a mutual coupling, the active impedances are dependent on the element excitations and will vary as a radiation pattern is scanned in various directions. The impedances of the array elements can then only be matched for a given direction. It is possible that the radiated or received power is significantly reduced scanning in other directions while the generator or load impedances remain fixed. It may even yield to a phenomenon known as a scan blindness at angles where the impedance mismatches result in no power being radiated or received. The active impedance can be modeled at the circuit level and give very limited insight about radiated electromagnetic fields. So, some of the modern simulation tools combine circuit and electromagnetic solvers together in a single software. However, this limitation still existed when we addressed a large number of array. The chart shows active impedance analysis measurement flow in system level analysis utilizing actual design data of circuit and electromagnetic simulation. Let's take a look at this moving to the next slide. From my system level phase array design schematic shown at the top left, I have imported four meaningful design data gathered from my research colleagues. At first, the antenna element far field radiation pattern and coupling matrix are imported into a behavioral antenna array model, which are all from antenna designers. Secondly, my circuit layout engineer gives me a S parameter matrix that represents feed network's characteristics in between power amplifier outputs and the antenna array inputs. Finally, I also have an X parameter file which extracted a nonlinear circuit behavior of the power amplifier. The black trace in the active impedance graph is calculated based on the phase array theory. However, the calculation of active impedance may not always be possible with the analytical expressions, and its initial estimation does not represent actual active impedance. So, the real active impedance measurement is conducted by applying an iterative convergence approach, as we reviewed in the previous slide. In recent limited wave phase array ICs for 5G communications, we can find that many of them are featured with simultaneous and independent beams in two polarizations to increase channel capacity up to 2x, as shown in the system model. Since two co-located orthogonal transmit antennas are installed on a co-located dual polarized antennas, a double number of transmit antennas can be compared to a spatially separate single polarized transmit array for identical size of the transmit array. For the nth element in a phase array of generalized radiating elements, the polarimetric element pattern that takes into account imbalances and cross-couplings between the horizontal and vertical radiated field can be written as F sub N, which is not known unless it is simulated or measured. Additionally, the TL module connected to this element may have a cross-coupling between its H and V port, as well as a complex gain 
phase imbalances between its H and V pores and those of other components on both transmit and receive. These cross-coupling and imbalances can also be modeled by a matrix multiplication of the H and V signals presented to the TL module on both transmit and receive with components as are designated in this figure. The use of orthogonal polarization to provide two communication channels has led to the interest in the polarization purity of antenna patterns. Here, I'm sharing different type of a polarization pattern decomposition method. After designing a dual polarized microstrip patch antenna, total 64 elements are arrayed. In general, the E theta and E5 format pattern has been used for far field scan in electromagnetic simulation or measurement. Then other types can be derived from that using a specific equation depending on the choice of the relative orientation of the pattern and polarization coordinate systems, as they are interchangeable. It has been used for different type of analysis. For example, the E co and E cross type is useful for studying gain loss from polarization mismatch. And Ludwig three type is good for orthogonal study between horizontal and vertical polarization. Turning to a higher level system engineering topic, let me talk about the process of system engineering briefly. Once the architect has designed the early concept of the system and identified the problems, they always look for alternatives by modeling the system using different tools, which are from analytic equations, flowchart, to complex computer simulation. These models can be a low level component, subsystem, and even entire system combined with various interfaces. Finally, the system performance is evaluated for updating system architecture. There are so many system engineering tasks that require different tools integration and actual design data exchange. As we reviewed, four different phase array electrical hardware effect example in the previous section. I'd like to demonstrate two more cases which are polarized communication system verification and millimeter wave RF transceiver performance evaluation through error vector magnitude test. In this page, let's start how we can interpret the polarization effect of the communication link which have been reflected, refracted, or diffracted by some material. Each antenna or array has an associated local cortisone coordinate system, XYZ, as shown in the figure. The local coordinate system can also be represented by a spherical coordinate system using azimuth, elevation, and range coordinate using symbols such as theta, phi, and r. At each point in the far field, you can create a set of a unit spherical basis vector aligned with the direction theta, phi, and r, respectively. In the far field, the electric field is orthogonal to the unit vector. The components of a polarized field with respect to this basis are called the horizontal and vertical components of the polarized field. In the general communication system, the polarization of the signal receiving is not the same as the polarization of the incident wave. What they call the polarization mismatch. This always derives the loss of power in the receiver. Therefore, the system engineer needs to model this effect very carefully. One of the modeling approaches is to use a polarization transfer matrix that is adopted by 3GPP. And another approach is to use a polarization rotation of the array antenna patterns. With that, let me demonstrate a system level simulation for geometric polarization. In this example, a transmitter is located at northwest from the center in XYZ coordinate system. The receiver starts moving from the south and stops at the north in this circular track. At each point, the distance between the transmitter and receiver is automatically calculated and applied to the channel model. The array patterns are rotated using departure and arrival angle of the propagation channel. From the design, this is a very simplified 
top levels committee, which include many different components at the lower level. The components in the middle is a customized 3GPP 3D channel model with the imported dual polarized antenna patterns and rotate them according to the geometric position. The channel is configured with an urban micro line of sight scenario that is matched to the specific cross polarization ratio. The components on the left and right of the channel model are for the phase array IC. Each transmitter and receiver are configured with horizontal and vertical polarization operation mode, and even it can change the beam angle for more complex scenarios. At the transmission side, the vertical transmitter sources is turned off intentionally to compare receive the power level between core polarization and cross polarization path. The two components on the rightmost are spectrum analyzer to measure the received power. From the received power graph, we can find a very interesting result. In some positions, the power level in cross polarization path is higher than core polarization path in this specific scenario. The term cross polarization ratio is used for the polarization effect in, in the channel. Combining the XPR with imperfect antennas yield the cross polarization discrimination. In this case, the ratio between RX pole 1 and RX pole 2 can be considered as XPD because we imported a real antenna pattern piles. This is a snapshot of my 6G system behavioral model and a vector analysis result. As you can see from the spectrum, my prototype system specification is targeted to 140 gigahertz center frequency, covering up to 30 gigahertz very wide bandwidth. A generalized OFDM-based wideband modem is developed with the numerology extension from 5G new radio and IEEE 802.11 standard. There are three actual hardware design data integrated in this system level time domain simulation. The orbit link component shown in the middle of the schematic is used to extract nonlinear characteristics of a D-band power amplifier circuit using X parameter file. As usual in the front end design, the filter and the amplifier are next to each other. A wideband analog filter is modeled here too by importing measured S parameters. At the antenna array component, the element pattern files are imported from an electromagnetic simulation software. The final component at the rightmost is a vector analysis software virtually connected into my system design and provided this analysis data being shown here. This is a frequency and time mixed cross-domain simulation environment that 5G and 6G research engineers equipped in their desk. Finally, let me sum up my main points. My millimeter wave beamforming system design started from architecting a phased array and wideband transceiver. In the first section, we explored the various beam codework design techniques and identified the problems. We also reviewed the electrical hardware effect by modeling a reference phase array system and utilizing actual design data acquired from hardware designers. By combining the models and data together into a system level, we could get a very good insight of the system level performance of my design. All the analytics are used for updating the initial system architecture. For all this research workflow, I would recommend utilizing a model-based system design and verification method. Thank you for your attention. Now, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Great. Thanks, thank you. Okay, thank you. Here is your first question. This question comes from Dan. What are the feasible bands above 100 gigahertz for test and, from test and measurement perspective? Thank you for asking that. I'm sure this question is on other people's minds as well. This relates to what I was saying earlier about extended spectrum 12 terahertz. The frequency up to 300 gigahertz, defined as extremely high frequency by International Telecommunication Union, may be the realistic candidate for beyond 5G 
and only 6G research opportunity considering available devices and semiconductor technologies we have. Great. Thanks, thank you. Here's your next question from Jamie. <clears throat> I am an antenna designer. The geometric polarization simulation looks useful to me. Which specific antenna radiation format can be used here? Can I do a throughput test for 5G new radio using my antenna design data? There are two questions here. So for the qu first question, we are supporting various types of the file formats, which are provided by three famous electromagnetic simulation software, EMPRO, HFSS, and CSD. If you have different format, you can combine creating a simple script because they are all text-based human readable file. And for the second question, yes, you can. There is a reference baseband modeling IP called 5G Baseband Verification Library. It provides many reference test benches for the link level system analysis, and you can import your antenna pattern files to the throughput example for the test. Okay, great, thank you. Here's your next question from you. This is a very informative presentation. What is the status of using a millimeter wave for communication system development in the 5G and 6G industry? There are already a number of 6G technology research projects looking into what, what might be needed for a millimeter wave communication system. About eight years ago, many of my 5G research colleagues in worldwide have started asking about the simulation method of a new waveform, hybrid beamforming architecture, and millimeter wave channel modeling. Now, I have been receiving this type of request again for the new and enhanced technology research. Although 6G mobile communications is a very long way off, research and developments are already starting and the pace will continue to increase. Great, thank you. And here's a question from Antonio. Okay, um, he asks, will silicon-based technologies perform well in terabits per second terahertz systems? That is a great question. It is challenging to envision the full replacement of silicon technologies. The all opportunities to switch the use of mainstream technologies will need further research from devices to transceiver architectures. Just like by CMOS-based semiconductor technologies that have provided a continuous reduction of costs per function and increased speed. However, there are clear limitations in material properties and unwanted parasitic effect in this extremely high frequency. So, we can see that many of research projects are focusing on other technologies such as silicon germanium heterojunction bipolar transistor that can outperform CMOS technology. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. We have a lot of questions. Here's a couple more. Okay, so from Lisa, how is the RF link part work, including an RF design for time domain EVM analysis? This simulation platform has two simulation engines, one for a time domain and one the other for a frequency domain. The EVM analysis is using a data flow-based time domain simulation engine. During data flow simulation initialization, a frequency domain simulation engine is run behind the scene and extract behavioral data for the RF design. The extracted data characterize the RF design in terms of its frequency response, nonlinear behavior, thermal noise, and phase noise performance. This data is used to set up an equivalent data flow network consisting of filters, amplifiers, mixers, oscillators, and noise generators. The analysis for RF signal is bandpass centers at the RF carrier frequency, more typically called the RF characterization frequency. This enables the design and exploration of communication systems at the algorithmic level in the time domain with the inclusion of RF system defined in the frequency domain. 
which considers RF effect, such as reflection due to the impedance mismatches, and reverses transmission due to non-ideal isolation. Great. Thank you, Sinkyo. And thanks for your question, Lisa. Okay, so here is a question from Larry. Okay, I know this answer, but I know you can answer much better. What software tools um, can be used for today to build a millimeter wave beamforming system? I appreciate that. This is of interest. Four different pathway design software were used for this research project. The system design, system view, is the main tool for the system level engineering. The advanced design system, ADS, is used for the circuit. The EM design, EM Pro, is for our antenna design, and the vector analysis, VSA, for the EVM measurement. The main reason of selecting these tools is because they are supporting a common data format that enables to exchange various design and simulation data across different domain tools. For complex system design, such as a millimeter wave beamforming, many domain experts are usually involved in the project, and each of them must use a different tool. So if they don't connect each other through the common data format, building a system may be very, very challenging. Great. Thanks, thank you. Okay, thank you. We have so many more questions, but let's take this last one. And I know you promised to respond to the rest, rest of them via email. So this one comes from Mehdi. How, how will my millimeter wave nonlinear power amplifier can be tested in the system level simulation? Cold simulation can be a solution to make different tools work together to simulate different parts of the overall system concurrently. But it usually takes a long time and requires complex integration of them. So I'd like to answer this question by using an x parameter approach that I've introduced earlier. x parameters characterize the linear and nonlinear circuit behaviors of RF components in a more robust and complete manner. Your transistor-level power amplifier circuit will be evaluated in a frequency domain using a steady-state circuit simulation technique, such as the harmonic balance. By using ADS circuit simulator, you can generate an X parameter XMP file to be used in a system-level simulation. In the system view, the imported XMP file can be integrated into a frequency domain engine using expanded Volterra model to approximate the full multi-carrier spectrum. In this step, you can test your amplifier integrated with a full phase array system design. In a final time domain simulation, the extracted nonlinear characteristics from an X parameters will be used for an error vector analysis. Great. Thanks so much, thank you. Um, always great to hear from you, and uh, thank you so much for your presentation today. Okay, thank you, Kalmina. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for attending. Learn how to design a 5G, 6G millimeter wave beamforming system brought to you by Keysight Technologies. Please visit us at www.keysight.com forward slash find forward slash events for a list of upcoming events, and we hope you stay well and have a great day. Take care.